Do you have a generator and do you live in the Federal Capital Territory? If you answered yes to both questions, you might have to pay for a gaseous emissions permit. That's because in the FCT, there's a new law that says that you have to pay an annual levy for using generators which emit harmful and hazardous substances into the environment. Let's talk more about that with Public Affairs Analyst, Mr. Mark Adebayo. Good morning, Mr. Adebayo. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning, Lost TV Africa. All right. Thanks. Let's let's begin with this um, situation here. Um, based on the angle of what the people will feel, then we go over to, you know, to analyze how, where the government is coming from. The government is supposed to provide power for her people. But because of that in, uh, inability, um, Nigerians go ahead to purchase generating sets and purchase fuel at a high cost to power those generating sets. And that's to make sure that they can sustain their businesses. But now the government is insisting that Nigerians will have to pay money for the harmful substances that have been released from those generating sets. From the angle of the people, how do you see this? Oh, thank you so much for having me on this topic. And uh, let me seize this opportunity to thank Los TV Africa for always, you know, engaging in people's interest topics and affairs. Uh, it shows you as a pro-people, pro-masses, you know, pro-development uh, TV station. And it's very rare uh, to have that in this country. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed about your station is the fact that uh, you, you, you go all out to, to seek out what is in the best interest of the masses of the people, and you bring it to bear, bring it to the fore, you know, for public analysis and discussions and conversations. And I want to appreciate uh, Plus TV Africa for that. I will Thank not you. be surprised, I will not be surprised at all if a few years down the line, you become number one, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa. Thank Kudos you. <laughs> to the management of your station. And uh, on behalf of the people, I want to appreciate that. Thank so, you, Coming back to your question. Uh, the situation we have found ourselves is quite um, pathetic. Because, you see, look, in, in this, I mean, I will just as, as I speak to you now. Now there's no, there's no light. There's no light here. If I should I put on my generator now, we will not be able to have this conversation as my other neighbors have put on theirs, you know, all around. If I put on my two to join the noise, the, the commission will not. I have to shut all the all the doors for you to hear that. So now Abuja, when what the Federal Capital Territory Administration has not taken into consideration is the fact that uh, this country is suffering from mass unemployment and when government cannot provide employment, pe people try to employ themselves, try to be their own bosses to build uh, you know, small, intermediate, medium uh, businesses. Now, you suddenly come with this idea of uh, taxing you know, the users of generator in the, in the capital territory. Now, it is not... It doesn't all go well for government to make money off the people. What government needs to do is to provide the enabling environment for businesses and citizens to thrive. Then you, know, you can now tax them. You understand? So you don't tax them in advance. We a situation where the government has failed since independence to provide adequate electricity for the people. And people have said, okay, we, let, let us provide electricity for ourselves, provide water for ourselves. You know, by, drill, by drilling borehole, as it obtains here. So, you now say, now you want to tax them for, you know, harmful gaseous emissions. What an irony. What an irony. I think the government should be paying the citizens for providing power for themselves. I think the government should be paying taxes to the citizens for, for providing power for ourselves. Now, I went to a place yesterday in, uh, in Maitama. I, I went to a business center to do... Uh, some kind of documentation, less of that. In that, like, 20 by 20 uh, office, we are, I saw a minimum of eight young people who are working on computers, doing photocopying, doing spiral binding, doing all manner of things there. That is providing employment. That person, in her own little way, in her own little corner, is providing employment for a minimum of eight to ten young Nigerians. Now, she has to pay taxes. 
Now she will buy fuel for the generator. She has to pay for security. She has to pay for the rent. She has to pay salaries to these young people. Suddenly you come up with, 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 with taxes and where you are not providing power. And you know, when you are running a business center, you need power 247. Now, you are not going to put a body on this woman who is struggling to make a living and through that, let others make a living. The unemployment rate in Nigeria is staggering. As a matter of fact, it is scandalous. And I think it's ungodly, and I think it's unfair, and I think it's unjust right. for yes, the sir. government rather than relieve the pains of the people to now continue to overburden the people with uh, overtaxation. This right. is overtaxation. Yes, there is, um, you know, been you know, uh, certain conversations that I've seen in the past with regards to taxation. So. Um, I want to ask, do Nigerians have a problem paying taxes or are there certain taxes that are just, you know, outrageous, you know, and, and inconsiderate, you know, on the plight of the people? Well, Lagos State, Lagos State is the best example of demonstrating how Nigerians are prepared to pay taxes. Lagos State is the best example. We pay taxes on all manner of things, you know. Look at how much the Lagos State alone generates from internal. The Lagos State has the largest internally generated revenue uh, profile in the country today, and it is via the people. The people pay. The people pay taxes, but they have issues. There are two issues that they have: outrageous tax, multiple taxation. That is one thing. Another thing is that when people pay taxes and they do not see return on investment of the taxes they are paying. We are, you still have terrible rules, you have terrible state of our education, terrible state of our health facilities. So people begin to query and question, what are we paying taxes for? And it is a legitimate query. It is a legitimate question. And um, I think uh, it's high time for government to come up with, you know, effective management of resources in terms of, you know, providing adequate services for taxes being made. From uh, of the people, we pay we pay we pay all manner of uh, you know this issue of uh, paying taxes on gas emissions of generators is so ridiculous. It is just as ridiculous the same way as the police and federal inspection officers will stop you on the road and be asking for your roadworthiness uh, certificate on roads that are absolutely vehicle cool unworthy. So it's, it's quite, you know, isn't that, doesn't that sound strange to you that uh, on Nigeria roads, somebody is asking you for roadworthiness certificate on these terrible roads? So now, the, one of the critical questions we must ask ourselves, and which the Federal Capital Territory Administration are, is yet to be able to provide answers for, is that these taxes you are going to collect, what are you going to use them for? Yeah. In, in what ways are you going to absorb the harmful gaseous emissions. Are you, going, are you going to clean the environment? What are you going to do, what are you going to do with it? So they, they have not been able, because they went around you know, distributing all these letters all over the place. You know? So they brought it here too, and I, I, I wasn't around. I would have asked the same questions. What are you going to do? OK, I, assuming without conceding that this tax is necessary, what are you going to do with the tax you are, you are collecting? You want to clean yeah. the environment? Do you have the technology? You have the we are with all? How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't, and then they, they cannot provide the answers up to now. They, yeah, they but but who, who should the these answers. questions be directed to? Uh, because, you know, that, that's, I think it's one of the challenges that Nigerian people have. You know, they might complain, you know, about one thing or the other, but they're not sure who to direct these questions to. Should it be the, you know, National Assembly? You know, is there, you know, a, a, a permanent secretary? Is there an office that these concerns should be, or these questions should be asked? Because it, you're, you're not going to direct it to the, you know, uh, officials who bring those letters to you. I know, but, you know, the Federal Capital uh, you know, Administration, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, or FCTA, that is distributing these letters, that is asking for these taxes, that is responsible for the collection of these taxes, should be able to provide the answers. The only way you can bring in the National Assembly, because FC, uh, the FCT does not have its own assembly, yes. it is the National Assembly that is responsible for this place. So the only, if you want a, uh, an intervention, I think the best way, place to go is to go to the, uh, to the National Assembly and present a petition to the National Assembly. Because this thing is going to kill small, intermediate, and medium businesses. And that is my major concern. I just gave you an example of a small business that we are, I went to do some paperwork yesterday. I, I think a minimum of 10, 10 young people, were, uh, uh, I saw them, they are working, doing one, one or two things, you know, you know, to make a living. 
for that innocent woman that is trying to make a living by giving people other opportunities for a country that is overwhelmingly overwhelmingly burdened by on, on youth on unemployment? You Mr. Know, Mr. Debayo, we, we are, should the challenge mm, here be um, imposing taxes on Nigerian businesses who are providing power for themselves or about governments providing power for the people? It is about government providing power for the people. So why and is the government not, not focusing on what it should do? Instead of, you know, that seeming to go after people who are providing that for themselves. Like they say, if you ask me now, who I go ask? So it is, it is the, it, that is what the government is supposed to be doing, but it's not doing it. It is like punishing the people for the failures of governance in this country. These taxes, this, this kind of tax is like punishing the people for the failures of governance. It is like, this, you know, they are discouraging creativity, they are discouraging industry, they are discouraging, you know, you know a lot of young people all over this place are, try, are, are, are struggling and making efforts. Not all, not all Nigerian youths are, are yahoo yahoo. And certainly no Nigerian youth is lazy, to, 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 to the best of my experience and knowledge and what I've seen, what I've seen daily. No Nigerian, these guys work so hard. If you know, if you know the number of, the, the number of CVs I have now, you know, even though I'm not, I'm not a politician. I, I, well, I am a, I'm a political activist. Even though I'm not in government, I'm not. I have over 500, and these are qualified graduates of Nigeria. They are asking for any, just yesterday. Very painful, very painful. A young lady just called me and said, "Sir, look, get me anything, even even to, to, to be a cleaner." I, I I almost shed tears. I was like, "Whoa, no, 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 no! How can you have two one and say you are look, you are looking for a cleaner's job?" So it, it has come to that. A lazy, a lazy you does not do that. So when you are down breaking taxes, instead of like, we should learn from Rwanda now. Let us learn from Rwanda. A, a country that just came from an atrocious, terrible civil war that cost almost two, two million lives. You know, one million lives were were lost in Rwanda within four months. Now they are coming out as one of the best uh, business friendly countries in, in Africa. And that is why it is developing. Look at people, businesses are moving to Rwanda. The people are focusing in, in, on Ghana. Now, go and check, go and research as what, what is happening in, in Rwanda, a, a, a country that went through such a terrible, a terrible situation of bloodshed. Now they are coming out. They are, now they are the cleanest, they are the cleanest country in Africa. They are moving very fast in terms of social interaction, social inter integration. They are not suffering from the religious antipathy that we are suffering in this country. They, they, they have learned from their past. They've learned from their mistakes. We should go to Rwanda and learn. Look, you can see that businesses, you know, you can see that international international businesses are moving into Rwanda because of the stability, because of the leadership, because of the creativity, because of the patriotic engagement of the citizens by the leadership of the, of the country to find solutions to their issues. And that's why they are progressing. There is lack, you see, what we, the situation we have now is that when you have a leadership that is devoid our bereft of thinking, they impose body on the people rather than softening yeah. their, uh, their, their, their body. And, and that that's, the that's where I was going to, I was going to, you know, bring, oh, that's what I was going to bring in next, you know, the thinking, you know, because somebody sat in his office and thought about, you know, ways that they can either generate more money from the business in, in Abuja, how the FCTA can generate more money and add to its, uh, its own contribution to the IG, to IGR or something. So, so where, where do you think this idea came up from, you know, that totally ignored the fact that these people are, are using generators because the government has failed to provide electricity? Um, who, 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 you know, would you say must have thought about this very brilliant idea oh to tax business owners in Abuja for gaseous emissions? Mr. Uh, well, um, yeah, well, okay, the yeah, part of your question that I was a break, uh, some some kind of. Uh, break no, I'm, I'm just. Time. If you can hear me now, can you hear me clearly? Yes, it's coming back now. Yeah. yeah, I was asking, you know, about the thinking. You know, where do these ideas come from? Who mm -hmm. who sat in a meeting or in his office and thought it would be great to tax uh, business owners in Abuja for gaseous emissions, completely ignoring the fact that government had failed to provide electricity. And when did Nigeria become so concerned about gaseous emissions and climate change? Look, um, uh, when maybe somebody sat down in his office and was thinking of how it, it, it is a desperate, it is a it is a process of desperation. It is uh, like our fire brigade approach in, in, into issues of governance here. Because the, the thing is that you are going to close down businesses rather than encourage businesses to expand. Because somebody will say, okay, for providing electricity for myself, I am going to still pay the government. Uh, no, we are paying. We are, we are paying the government for this 
the electric, the epileptic electricity they are bringing. You are bringing now. It is not. It is not. It is not consistent. It is not current. Then you, what do you do? You, you you go and buy a generator, and then you buy the fuel. The generator will break down. You service it. You know all, all that is taking, you know, uh, taking away from your capital, taking away from your businesses. Now the government now comes out for even for providing electricity for yourself, you have to pay that for a service that government has failed to provide for the people. Now you have to pay for providing the services for yourself. Let me tell you, thinking has not gone into that into that decision. No thinking has gone into that. It is, it is a thoughtless and unfair, and, and, and unfair uh, policy. That policy, this policy is not good for... And if the government, if the government really believes that it's supposed to be for the well-being and welfare of the people, it's not supposed to be this type of uh, policy at this time. Because the question remains that if you are not providing for myself and you want to punish me for providing for myself, I mean, how, how, does, that, how, how, does, that even, how does that even sound? To people who are making these policies. Uh, and before you know it now, they begin to send in security agencies to enforce the payment of these taxes. And that is, that is that it's, it's so unfortunate. So just talking about of... enforcement, Mr. Adebayo, um, the Director of Public Health, HOD Environment, AMCA, um, Ahmed Aruna, in the statement that he signed yesterday, he said that, you know, the people who violate this order, organizations and businesses who use power generating sets and fail to comply by paying the levy would be punished and arrested. Wow. How stringent do you think this is? This is because um, we have uh, we operate an extremely punitive system of governance in this country. It is always every time the government finds new new ways to overburden the people, to punish the people, as if we are not being punished enough. So because look 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 at the threat, look at the threat. You will, you will know that these guys are in government not because of the people. They, they, they just they just want to snuff life out of everybody, out of all businesses, out of the masses, and it is unfair. It is unjust, and I I, I find it difficult to even to even believe that uh, these people really think that government is about the people. I, I I don't think they think so. That government is strictly about the people. That what you call government is about organizing society, organizing people, and providing succor for the challenges of the people. I don't think people, the people you have in government actually think about that. It's, it's quite unfortunate because, you see, um, new businesses will be discouraged. They will not bother to even open again. You understand me? Because if you want to succeed in any business in this country, probably after getting a space, the next thing is for you, even before you get your furniture to go to look for generator, you need a generator because... So that is why I do not see any, no matter how small, this, 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 the, the, the little shop where they are selling sachet water, they need a generator to make it cold. So every little business, every medium uh, uh, scale business needs generator. Every large scale business needs generator. So if you say that you are going to be taxing them, for that alone, we may lose up to 40% 40, 40 of new business initiatives that are about coming up. So, because, so in that... You know, Yes, Mr. Debaya. So in that light, let's take a look at the ease of doing business ranking. Um, 190 countries were assessed. Um, at the last count, Nigeria ranked 141. Um, but uh, it's seen that Nigeria moved up a couple of spaces up. We're now 131 uh, out of 119 countries ease of doing businesses. Um, we celebrated that. There was reports, you know, celebrating that Nigeria has moved up, meaning that we're very good when it comes to doing business in Africa. We're second only after Togo. But now that the FCT is introducing this, how do you think this might affect our ease of doing business ranking? And is it likely for other states to begin to adopt this, you know, gaseous emissions levy? That is my fear. That is my fear. Uh, some of the states who are also not uh, thinking well will follow suit. That is my fear. They, 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 are, they, are, they are going to wait maybe for like a, a few months after the, when they see the implementation, how it goes, and then they will start bringing all these things on board. That is my fear. And it's, going, it's not going to augur well for all of us. It will increase the insecurity. That is a, that, that, that is a, that is a connecting link between insecurity and poverty and unemployment. And where, where, where a, a small business is employing 10 youths and now bring taxes, and the person starts like five of them or four of them, 
you are increasing the unemployment rate. Uh, by that, you are increasing insecurity, and you are increasing you are, you are increasing uh, what you call cyber crime. Because some of these wow. youths are very good on the uh, in the use of computers and just of that. We're saying if you if you close down where they are working, then they, they also join the, well, the, the um, growing army of Yahoo Yahoo boys, yeah, Mr. which Debayo. is not well for us. Well, not necessarily so, also the, not necessarily also having to fire you know staff. It also might mean increasing the cost of uh, goods and services in order to meet up with these you know uh, bits of taxation here and there, um, or cut down salaries. Yeah, all that. You know, but but I, I also want you, I want you to speak on how this can be challenged legally, um, or maybe also through civil society organisations or the likes. So, you know, is there bodies that should be able to speak on behalf of uh, business owners across uh, the country, and in what ways would you advise that this can be challenged? Thanks, hmm. welcome. Can you hear me? Um, so I, I think yeah, I I I, 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 I got the gist. The thing is that um, I think at this point in time, uh, the civil society organizations here in Abuja need to rise up. And I I am going to take up the challenge by reaching out to some of my colleagues that uh, we first we need to write to the National Assembly and write to the Federal Capital Territory Administration. And then the, the people, and then of course we have to carry the people along. There has to be a kind of uh, responsible mass action to stop this. This must not be allowed to fly. You are, you are going to kill businesses, you are going to kill initiatives, you are going to kill, uh, you are going to de destroy the, the impetus of the people to go into businesses. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, 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 that's just emission. What we need to do is to find a way to stop the emissions entirely and by, by, by generating enough power, by, by uh, distributing enough power, by supplying enough power. You know, generation, distribution, supply, you know, that is what we need to do to stop, you know, gaseous emissions. You do not keep businesses to stop gas emissions. What you do is to increase your capacity to generate, your capacity to distribute, your capacity to supply. The owner is a government to find solution not by overburdening the people with these taxes. These taxes are not going to stop gaseous emissions. They are going to stop it. They are going to, they are going to keep businesses. And that is unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Look, okay, Mr. You, you cannot transfer your responsibility of governance to the people by punishing the people for your failures. It is po this policy of taxation of generators, it is punishing the people for the failures of government. So, Mr. Adebayo, yes, we understand that, you know, these levies would harm small businesses in Nigeria that are trying to survive. In other developed countries, government is actually giving, you know, stipends and stimulus packages for businesses, you know, to make sure that they recover from the effects of the pandemic. But the opposite seems to be the case here. Yes, we do understand that fact. But also to bring balance to the story, to mention that, you know, the emissions in generators are actually harmful to the human body. Um, a report here mean. shows that um, 1,500 deaths uh, per year you know, in Nigeria from inhaling generator smoke. Also that um, when you inhale the smoke from generators, you are 70% um, likely to contract lung cancer. And uh, it also causes about hearing impairment in about two to three users. So yes, these factors all exist. The fact that it's hurting businesses when you impose these levies. And also the other side that, you know, generators are harmful to human health, you know, in terms of cancer, their hearing and all of that. But can we drive home the points that the government does need to increase, you know, its capacity to generate and transmit electricity in Nigeria? I think that should be, you know, where we drive this conversation towards, isn't it? That's the solution. That is the panacea to these myriads of, uh, of issues or problems that you have, you have outlined. Everybody knows that generator emissions, vehicle, any vehicular emission, even aeroplane emissions, anything you know, that brings out uh, the, the, this type of gases, you know, is not good for human health. It's not even good for the environment. You know, it's not good for the environment. It is, a, it is an enemy of the environment. We all know that. But how have governments in the, in the world have been dealing with this issue? It is for them to... to Number one, increase their capacity to generate and you know supply electricity. Or people are going into uh, into what you call a, a green, green revolution or you know or providing electricity through natural means. You understand? Through natural means, solar power, solar energy, um, cleaner, cleaner uh, energy, other sources, basically. Uh, alternative sources of energy. And all these samples. That is what that is what the policy should be. That is where we should be going. Not that. We will now say 
we want you want to sort of uh, discourage people from using generator uh, so that if you tax them i mean what are they driving at that if you tax them they will stop using generator no <laughs> i mean you 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 are just trying to keep businesses it, it, it is i've told you that it is it didn't go through uh deep thought processes they just came up somebody just woke up and said look we need money we need to make money let us you know punish this people demand so let us tell them that because there is no household no matter how small you know how people said there's something they called I better pass my neighbor. Yeah, everybody, two, two everybody point two million generating generator. sets. Yes. Is there is there um, imagine? Yeah, Mr. Debar, is there any uh, um, information on what the figures for these uh, levies are? Uh, up to now, they have not been, they have not said. Um, in fact, they were asked, they, they couldn't say, they didn't say. So uh, I, I I assume I suspect it is going to be it, it, it just it's just going to be dis indiscriminate. It's going to be indiscriminate. It's probably going to be... Depending on the size of, of your someone. generator set. Somebody, pardon? Maybe depending on the size of your generator set. Or, or the size of the uh, Maybe. No, maybe. Nobody has outlined how the, 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 well, they're going to go about it. So they just, if, you, if you bring any of those guys on TV and you are asking them these questions, you will see that they are also as confused as everybody. Because they just, the only thing that they are looking at is how to make the money, not... Not all these questions. They, are, they, they don't really bother themselves about the critical questions right. that affect the, the critical mass. They don't, they, don't, they don't bother themselves about all those. All so, right. and it's Mark quite Adibayo. unfortunate. And we must change the idea. We must change this practice of punishing Nigerians for the failure of governance. Absolutely. Mark Adebayo, thank you very much for your, uh, you. your time this morning. And, uh, thank we, you, Plus course, TV uh, Africa, for always being there for the people. God Absolutely. bless your TV station and all Thank of you, you over there. Thanks for speaking with us. We'll take a short break, you know, and of course he's raised very, very strong points, you know, and I would have been really excited if I could speak with any of the FCT officials, you know, just like these same questions. What are these, you know, the taxation going to be used for, you know, and you mentioned, uh, you know, lung cancer because of... Uh, um, hair and impairment the, as well. Uh, Death. impairment also. Yeah, yes. You know, so when you collect a tax, you know, does it reduce the amount of people who, you know, Do you use the cancer? tax to pay compensation you? for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, we'll be back. We'll take a short break and we'll be back here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.